Hi everyone, I'm going to teach you how to pick a suitable badminton for yourself by ignoring all the marketing fluff and only focusing on the crucial stuff. So let's go pick your racket. So there are five things you need to consider when purchasing a racket and the first one doesn't even relate to the racket itself. So for me, the most important thing to consider when buying a racket is your budget. You need to be comfortable with what you're playing within what your budget allows. So set yourself a budget and if you're happy playing with the highest end and most expensive rackets, great, more options for you. If not, don't worry, there are plenty of rackets at every single price point, so there'll be plenty of options for you. The next four things you need to consider with your racket is mostly dictated by how good you are or your playing ability as well as your personal preference and playing style. So the four things you need to consider is the overall weight of the racket, the stiffness of a racket, the balance of a racket and the grip size. So all of them work hand in hand to form your perfect racket. So the overall weight of a modern badminton racket is typically around 80 to 90 grams. They're defined in number of U's for brands like Yonex and Victor. Other brands such as Leaning uses W to represent their overall racket weight. So for Yonex and Victor, the higher the number of U, the lighter it is. So for example, 3U is for rackets between 85 to 89 grams, 4U, 80 to 84 grams. They then go down to 75 to 79 grams for 5U. Yonex also renames their racket F for rackets with 6U. So make sure you check out each brand's labels before committing to purchasing one. So the next spec is referring to the stiffness of your racket shaft. There's no real way of measuring each racket shaft's stiffness except for holding the racket by its grip and the racket head and bending it slightly and swapping for a second racket and doing the same to feel the difference. How much racket speed you can generate dictates how much power you can transfer onto a shuttle. So finding the right balance in your racket might result in you hitting a faster smash instead of an out and out super stiff racket. A stronger and technically better player would be able to better leverage a stiffer racket's potential more efficiently. So if you're a beginner or physically weaker player, I would really recommend leaning towards a less stiff racket. Um, the third spec is the balance of a racket. So this usually means if the racket weight is leaning towards the head of the racket or away from the head. So head heavy rackets tends to be slower and less agile or nimble around the court. I think this is why people generally say head heavy rackets have more power, but it is just more mass around the racket head. Hence the ability to transfer more energy to the shuttle for the same amount of acceleration. But if you lack the required acceleration, it wouldn't work as efficiently. So you have to keep that in mind. So if you're a player who wants to be super fast around the net and have amazing quick fire defenses, a racket with an even balance or one that is leaning towards headlight models might work really well for you. Um, take a look at all the pro players who have big smashes on the world tour, such as Fu Haifeng, Tan Bun Hyong, Mads Pila Kolding, Yu Yong Sung. None of them actually use a super head heavy, ultra stiff racket. All their rackets revolve around being even balanced or even headlight with a varying degree of shaft stiffness for their own personal preference. Yet, they can still hit huge smashes. This means finding the right balance for yourself is key and not what others are using. The racket might be good for Li Chong Wei or Lin Dan, but it might not be suitable for us. So make sure we keep that in mind. So the final spec you need to consider for your racket is the grip size. So Yonex, for example, uses G G3, G4, G5, G6, and so on, with the higher numbers being a smaller grip. So personally, it's best to test out the racket and have a feel of it. However, if you can't or cannot decide, always get the smaller grip size because you can always bulk up and make it bigger but you can't make it very small very easily unless you sand it down. If you want to check out how to regrip a racket here is a previous video that I've done to teach you how to regrip three different types of grip onto your racket. Um, so finally to put this all together I would certainly recommend everyone to go through your favorite racket brands Racket Matrix. They give you a really good feel for the racket which might really suit what you need. So to put it in context, if you're a beginner player who is looking for a mid-range Yonex racket and doesn't have amazing technique and also preferring a headlight racket, using the Yonex catalog, I can see the Nano Flare and Nano Ray series cater to headlight models. After studying the racket matrix, I can actually see I might prefer models on the bottom half of the matrix, say the 270 and the 160, even the 600 and 700. 
So looking at the models, I'll be looking at the medium to flexible models. So the 270 and 700 qualify if my budget allows. Make sure you check out all the specs just to make sure. So check out how to check your Yonex rackets are genuine through this video here. It's so easy, good thing to check. So the best thing is to really go out and test the rackets and try the rackets. You can always borrow your friend's racket or a player from your club who have different rackets to you. Make sure you try it, remember how it feels and then go from there. Let me know in the comments section below if you have any questions and I will always do my best to answer them. Give it a like if you enjoyed this video too and make sure you're subscribed for more for content like this. Thank you and see you next time.